morning, we glorify you. Hallelujah, glory to the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, good morning, everyone. Good morning to you who are watching. My name is Pastor Anne-Marie Sergio. I am in Orange Park, Florida. I am glad that you are here, you tune in. And those of you, you who's gonna watch later, and I know that God has a word for you. So open your ear and open your heart to receive what the Holy Spirit is going to teach you this morning. Hallelujah. So we're going to jump right in. From last week, we were talking about uncircumcised heart to let God circumcise your heart. So we're going to continue um, with uh, what he put in my heart to, to say today. So hallelujah. So let's just invite the Holy Spirit and so that he can do what he does best. Hallelujah. Father God, we just bless you this morning and we thank you. We worship you and adore you, Father. For you are Lord and you are God. There is no other, no other besides you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you and we thank you for what you're going to do. We release your kingdom to rule and reign this morning. Holy Spirit, I ask that every word that will come forth my mouth is your word. Let me be invisible this morning, Lord God, and allow your people to see you through me in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you will open heart this morning, open their ears so that they may hear what your Holy Spirit is saying. Let their heart receive it, Lord God. And let it fall into good ground so that it will bear fruit that will remain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We, we thank you for a word this morning and to season. We thank you for a word, Lord God, that will rip the veils open. We thank you for a word, Father God, that will heal your people. We thank you, Father God, for what you're going to do. Jesus, I'm now seated in the heavenly places with you. Allow me to see what you're doing so that I can do it. And let me hear what you say so that I can speak the same thing. Hallelujah, we thank you. Right now, Father God, we take authority right now over every unclean spirit in Jesus' name, every demonic distractions, in the name of Jesus. Once again, Lord, we release your kingdom to rule and reign. Hallelujah. It is in Jesus' mighty name we praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, praise the Lord. I hope everybody, you know, those of you watching, you had a good week. You know, no matter what you went through, it is good because you're still here. That means there is hope. Just keep your eyes upon the Lord. And I promise you, it will be better. It may not be the way you like it. Because God's way is higher than yours. And his thoughts is higher than yours. That means he doesn't do things the way we do things. But keep your eyes upon him. Don't resist the Holy Spirit because when we do that... That's when things get hard. But, you know, whatever he's doing in your life, it is to bring you to the next step. It's to glorify him. You know, it's to, you know, uh, uh, strip one more uh, things out of you so that you can look more like Jesus. Hallelujah. So I thank God. I thank God for what he's doing. So let's dive in. Last, last week, we were talking about uncircumcised heart. And we talk about, uh, uh, you know, what a circumcised heart is. And then we, we did read the um, um, scripture on Deuteronomy 10, 12 to 13. I'm going to read that again as a recap, okay? It said, Deuteronomy 10, 12 to 13, and King James, New King James Version, it says, And now Israel... What does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, 
and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandment of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for your good. For your good. So in order to serve God, we talk about that last week, with all your heart, all your soul, is to let God circumcise your heart. Let him get in. You know, you got to let him deal with your heart. We also, um, we also um, use the scripture, Deuteronomy 30, verses 6, that says, And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, that you may live. So all of that is just for you to live, that's all. Is to let God deal with your heart. Because if you don't let him deal with your heart, guess what? Your life's going to cut short. So, you know, we already see what's going on out there. You know, young people are dying like flies. Things are happening out there. We got this COVID-19 going on. I'm telling you, spirit of death is just doing its thing out there. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and things is just happening. So we cannot just, you know, take chances anymore. We cannot be playing games anymore. If you are somebody that God been, you know, keep, you know, telling you the same thing, let me have access to your heart. You know, now is the time. You know, listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying because what he's saying is for your good. Because he wants you to be with him later. You see know what I'm saying? You don't want to do all these things, work, 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 work. You see know what I'm saying? Work does not take us to heaven. Because if it could, Jesus would not have to come. Okay, so listen to the Holy Spirit. So we talk about what an uncircumcised heart is. An uncircumcised heart is one that is closed and sealed to God's attempt. You know, attempts to affect it, meaning to deal with your heart. You just close it. You just don't want to be bothered. Okay, that's an uncircumcised heart. And, and, and we did talk about a circumcised heart refers to having a pure heart, a, a separated to God. To have a circumcised heart is only the Holy Spirit that can purify the heart and set it apart. Nobody else. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. To have a circumcised heart. So there is a lot of you who don't believe in the Holy Spirit. That's too bad. Because all you're going to have is self-righteousness. All you're going to have is just works. Like I said, works cannot take you to heaven. Okay, so that means there is no change in your life. No change. You are the same person. If you have a filthy mouth before you got born again, guess what? You still have that filthy mouth. Okay, you, you, you try to control it, but I tell you, man, the enemy always sends somebody your way that push the right button, and here you go, here you go. You see what I'm saying? So no one but the Holy Spirit can change people. No one. Only God that do that. So we need to stop pestering people. You know, only thing it's going to do when we keep pestering people about changing, about the things they're doing, they're changing. Or, you know, you keep doing this thing that we do. Okay? So only what it's going to do is drive that person away from God. You can't change people because you're not God. You're not God. You cannot do the work of God. He says in Proverbs 21, verse 1, he said, God holds king's heart and his hand. He will turn in however he please. However he please. That's how God will, will, will uh, do. That means he's the one who has control of the heart. Nobody else. Nobody else. Or right, what we can do is help, is pray, is interested for someone so that God will change their heart, will touch their heart. And that might take a minute, but God is the one who will do the changing and not us. And those of you leaders who, who you know, you, you always preaching in a way, but you, not, you think you're doing something good by condemning and this and that. No, you're not doing that because you're not God. Okay, all you can do is pass on the message. The message and then let God does this thing because all we do here on earth, those of you leaders, those of you that God chose, is all we do, we plant, 
we water. We plant, we water. He sends you places, you plant the gospel, and you sometimes he sends you to just water. Don't you see sometimes, oh, you just say a couple of words to somebody, and then all of a sudden they accept the Lord. It didn't just happen. God has somebody plant the seed, and then he kept sending people to water it and water it, and guess who with the harvest? God does, not us. All we do, we just label words. And then that's all, that's our job, to label. And then God is the one who's going to reap the harvest. So having said that, and I, I, and I quote last, last time, saying that uh, circumcised, uh, being circumcised in the flesh cannot make a person right with God. The law is not enough. A person must change in the heart. So the law is not enough. Um, Jesus had to deal with those who think that the law can can do something about it. It was the Pharisee. They were self-righteous. And that's not how we want to be today. We don't want to be self-righteous. Hallelujah. So let's continue. I got a few scriptures I'm going to give you. You know, and I'm going to run through this very quickly and giving you the scripture. Okay, read the scripture. Don't just take them and that said and then you wait for the next time. No, you know, read them for yourself and, and ask the Holy Spirit to give you, you know, um, revelation on what you're reading. I'm telling you, that's how you grow. That's how faith comes, okay? Hallelujah. So, and um, we're going to continue. I have... Uh, I have a note here that said, if we insisted in not letting God deal with our heart, we will become stiff-necked people, just like the Israelite. Because when you refuse for God to work in your heart, to circumcise your heart, you're going to become just like those people in the desert when Moses had to deal with them. The Acts 7.51 says, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit as your father did, so do you. So this is Apostle Stephen as um, he was preaching the gospel before they stoned him to death. He spoke that. You know, he said, we are a stiff-necked generation. Okay, a stiff neck. We are uncircumcised in heart and in ears. And then he said, we do, we, we do not allow the Holy Spirit to, to circumcise our heart. A stiff neck person is someone who's unyielding, meaning he will not change no matter what. He's not going to bend down, bind down. He's like, I mean, you know, you get someone, uh, I can take as an example, Pharaoh. He was stiff-necked. He would not bow no matter what. No matter what God had to really, uh, you know, break this man down. He doesn't have to take all that. He doesn't have to take all that for, 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 for God to bring you down to your knees in order to... to to, you know, to for you for him to deal with your heart. So a stiff necked person is an unyielding person. His head is set, his jaw is out thrust, his ears are closed, his teeth are clenched, and he says, I won't do it. This is the effect of an uncircumcised heart. That's how we do. We just like I'm not moving. I don't care what you say, I don't care what you do. My way is the way, and that's it. And it's like even God, you won't even let God get through you. you. So, and that's not a good thing. We don't want to be called stiff net. You know, we don't want to be called that because that's not a beautiful thing. Because we, we, we read the stories in the book of Exodus, and we see how those people were. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You, you know what I'm saying? All of them die in the desert except for two. Two, Caleb and Joshua, the two original people that walked out of Egypt are the only two who made it to the process, to the promised land. Everybody else they took with them was their descendant, the stiff-necked people. They die in the wilderness and not get a thing from God. And we're talking about those people, they sing the power of God. They sing the power of God, but they never let God process their heart. They never did. That's how they knew the power of God. But Moses knew God's way. He knew God's heart. 
You see what I'm saying? So that's not how we want it. We don't want it to be about the power of God. Everybody's hungry for power. They want to do this. They want to do that. They want to do this. They want to do that. The things that we do is through the power of God. The things that we do is through the power of God. But that's not what you look for. You got to look for God's heart. You got to let God come and change your heart. Everything else will add because what you have, the glory of God, the, 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 the presence of God, everything else follow. Because what happened? God is filling your heart because God is filling your heart and his power is flowing out of you. That's what happened with Peter when he walks and then he shadow heals people. That's what happened to Apostle Paul. His handkerchief heals people. Not only that, not only that, his handkerchief casts out demons. Come on. That's God. That flows out of him. And that even to his clothes. We know Jesus was so full of his father. And then this woman with the issue of blood said, if only I touch his, the hem of his clothes. And that's why she did the power just flow. So therefore, we don't look for the power. We look for God himself. God, God, his heart. And let him come in and circumcise that heart. And then what you hungry for, the power, will just flow naturally. Naturally. You see what I'm saying? I know we are attracted to the things. Oh, what shall I lay hand in the child? We call her woo, and the name of Jesus demons get away. You know, things that are, I know those things are good. We want to do the, 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 the miracles, the this, the that, the signs, the wonders. Those are the power. Power. But now we're talking about having God circumcise the heart, having the very presence of God, having communion with God. That's a whole different thing because if you couldn't get that, if you let God circumcise the heart, many of you are asking, oh God, I want you to use me. I want you to use me. But he's trying, but you're not letting him in. So if you let him in, he's going to circumcise the heart. He's going to get rid of those things. And then now, every time God gets rid of something in your heart, he, he deposits himself in you. And the next thing you know, you're going to be all filled up with God. And then he said, what you try to look for, what you're hungry for, I can give it to you effortless. Effortless. Those guys didn't have to do all these screaming and yelling at the demon. They just talk and say, get out of the way. You see what I'm saying? They, they didn't have to do a bunch of things that we do today. Screaming and yelling at the demons and, and this and that. Blah, 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 blah. You know, all these things. No, 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 no. It will be effortless. You see what I'm saying? Because it will be God doing it through you. That's why it, we must let God process us. We must let him process the heart. It says that uncircumcised ear. Stephen go as far as say uncircumcised ear. And the uncircumcised ears are those that hear the word of God imperfectly. Usually because they hear only what they want to hear or they are with such a strong prejudice that they reject the truth. What is prejudice? Prejudice is to preconceive opinion. It's just preconceived opinion that is not based on reason or actual experience. You know how when we see somebody, you know, you know, the black, the white, the this, the that, that goes on today, we are so prejudiced about, you know, so and so and this and that. We just look at that person and we already label them, we already preconceive all those things about them, and we do that. That's an uncircumcised ear. You sitting in here, or you watching me, or you sitting in a church building, wherever you are, and you listening to the men or women of God preaching the word, and then you choose to hear what you wanna hear. When God get in your face, you start saying, "Oh, you're judging me." You know, you start seeing the, 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 the leader, the pastor, the whoever is preaching, they're judging you because now God is trying to get in your face and tell you, oh, you need to leave that, that neighbor's wife alone or that neighbor's wife, uh, husband alone. You know, and you say, oh, 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 you're getting in my face. You see what I'm saying? So, therefore, we don't like that. 
So if we choose to hear what we want to hear, that, that is an uncircumcised ear. So that we might want to ask the Lord, please circumcise my ear so that I can hear when you speak to me. So that I can open my heart to receive what you say. Because everything that God speaks is life. His word is life. So if you receive his word, you receive in him, you receive in life. Okay? So what can we, um, we can also have an uncircumcised lips, by the way. Exodus 6, verses 12. I'm going to read that in the New King James Version. Exodus 6, verses 12, he says, And Moses spoke before the Lord, saying, The children of Israel have not heeded me. How then shall Pharaoh heed me? For I am of uncircumcised lips. We know the story of Moses, how he did all these things for the Lord. He had a, a, a oh my God, a phenomenal relationship with God. But he ended up losing his blessing. He ended up not going to the promised land. God allowed him to see it, but you can't touch it. But this man had a phenomenal relationship with God. A face-to-face -face relationship. But yet he didn't make it to the promised land. All this time he worked so hard, put up with all those ungrateful people, but yet he didn't make it. Why? Because he, you see what he says here? He said, I have an uncircumcised lips. Moses was, uh, had a speech problem. A lot of time when you see people with speech problem, they got an anger problem. Because they're trying to speak, they're trying to get out. You know, stuttered people who stuttered, some people stuttered very badly. They got it. Because they have that speech problem, guess what? They have an anger problem. Because they have an anger problem, guess what? They have an uncircumcised This Because those people, they cannot speak without cursing. They got ooh, bad stuff coming out of their mouth. You've seen her. I'm sure you, 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 you have one in your life or you work with one or you've seen one in a store. Ooh, Walmart is full of them. You know, you don't have to go far. You see what I'm saying? People with that kind of problem, speech problem, anger problem, usually have a filthy mouth. So Moses told God, how does people going to hear me? That's when the Lord was telling me, I need you to go back to Egypt. This is what I need you to do. He said, they're not going to listen to me. If they're not going to listen to me, you think the king going to listen to me? The, uh, my, uh, I, 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 I can only imagine the, 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 the scene, him telling God, uh, 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 you, 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 you think the king going to listen to me? You see what I'm saying? You can imagine. Imagine this. He said, I have an uncircumcised lips. So now this is that uncircumcised lips that prevent him from going into the promised land. So he never let God deal with that. God tries. He said, don't you think I know how your lips is? Then I make it. You see what I'm saying? But he had a relationship with God, but yet he closed that little part. He never let God deal with it. And then until Satan used those people as he had been doing for all these years, he used that and touched the right button. And then Moses must have stopped cursing. His anger must have stopped coming out and he missed representing God. That's why God didn't let him get and he said, you miss representing me before the people. That's all he did. He missed representing God because he let his anger get in the way. Because his anger get in the way, he must have start stuttering. Uh, and then he must have said, oh, oh my God, I don't even know what came out of his mouth. And he paid the consequences. That's not what we want. We want God to circumcise that lips. Uh, because you know, you know, let me tell you, I would have the heart, Matthew, Matthew 15, Matthew 15, 19, it says, out of the heart precedes what? Evil thoughts, murder, adultery, 
fornication, death, false witness, and blasphemy. Luke 6 45. He said, Out of your mouth, out of your mouth, when you speak something, guess where it comes from? The heart. Because in Matthew 15, he says, in the heart, there is only evil things going on. So you spoke out of it. So now if you let God circumcise the heart, guess what? And then God as he circumcises it, as you letting him in and deal with those issues, issues in our life, guess what? And then he's filling you with himself. So now when you speaking, guess what you're speaking? You're speaking out of the abundance of your heart, right? So what you're speaking, you're speaking out of God. God is flowing out of you. Blessing is coming out of your mouth when somebody did something to you. Not cursing them out, not start praying against them, not saying that I wish you were dead, not doing those things, those evil, wicked things that we do. Out of your heart. So now if you're full of God, you can help it, but you have good stuff coming out. You can help it, but to see somebody else through God's eyes, you can help it because God is in your heart. When you're reading the word of God, you're filling your heart with the word of God. You're filling yourself with God. You see what I'm saying? And then ask the Lord, please help me to keep those words in my heart because if they stay in my heart, the enemy don't come and steal them, but the distractions going on, if my heart become a good ground, if I let God circumcise it, if I let God tempt it, my heart, every time to bring forth a good fruit. Because a heart that's not circumcised cannot bring forth a good fruit. It's only going to bring forth the things I just read to you in Matthew 15, 19. That's all. Bad trees cannot bear good fruit. Jesus said it in that same um, chapter. Bad fruit Bad trees cannot bear good fruit. Vice versa. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. So when you let God circumcise the heart, work in your heart, you have nothing but good stuff coming of that, out of that lips. Proverbs 4.23 says, Guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issues of life. Everything flows out of that heart. That's why it's important us as Christians to let God work in it. To work, let God work in it. Hallelujah. It says, uh, when we don't let God circumcise our heart, it stops us from growing. When you're not letting God deal with those things in your heart, it stops you from growing. Hebrews 6, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to read this in the easy version. It says, So we must go on from the first lesson that we learn about Christ. We must grow as believers so that we understand more and more. We should not go back to those first lessons again and again. We already know that we must turn away from wrong things that leads to death. We already know those things. We, we know that we must trust God. This is the author in, in Hebrews talking about that. He's saying because Back then and still now, still, people, they born again of the lips. They refuse to let God get in the heart. And then these people, they make the leaders work in vain because you always have to go back to the same thing. You know, that and them, the same thing, the same thing. They're grown folks. And then yet you, they still want to suck bottles. They still want to suck milk. And that's what this, the, uh, that's what 
the verse is saying. We don't, you know, you, you know those things. You know that we already learn about how to become cleaner. You know, we know that leaders put their hands on, on, on other Christians to pray for God's help. We know of that. We know that God will raise dead people to live again. We know of that. And we know that God will judge every person one day at the end of time. Yes, we must choose to go on from those early lessons. God is ready to help us to do that. Hebrews 6, 1, 2, 3. I don't know if you, um, some of you may, may notice that. Some of you may have people around like that. You know, in the church, there is a lot of them like that. There is some folks, they just don't grow. They just don't grow in the Lord. And they've been born again for 10, 20, 30, 40, even 50 years. They remain the same. They do not grow. Because they want to run the show. Because, God, I love you, but my heart is personal. None of your business. That's how they act toward God. And God's trying to grow them up. Yes, you can become crippled spiritually when you don't let God deal with the heart. You know people are like this? Guess what happened? God have no use for you. I don't care. You pray until you blew in the face. God has no use for you. What you want God to do through you, he can't do it. Because the only thing you, you just stay right there. I know Jesus raised from the dead. I know he's the son of God. I know, and then, you know what? Some of you not even filled with the Holy Spirit. You just stay there. You crippled. You can't walk. You can't do nothing. You take enough space. God has no use for you. And you keep crying out. When you cry out to the Lord, he said, I hear you, God said, but you need to let me in. But God kept on knocking. He kept on telling you this, that, this, that. You don't want to. You don't want to. But yet, you want him to use you. And then you know what? At the end, this is what you end up doing. You go out there, you start your own church, you start your own prayer group, you start your own ministry, you start your own, you know, feed the poor, you start your own mission, you, you choose your, your own country to go to, to go do things. You choose your own thing to do. You're working, you're busy working for the Lord. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. I'm busy working for the Lord. Oh, you go to the hospital, you pray for the sick but your prayer have no power you know you're doing all these things and they only work based on you because God didn't save you God didn't ask you because the only thing he asks you is for him to work in your heart but you said no you said no and he said you know what I got another way well, you know what, Lord? This is this is earth. This is not heaven. This is earth. Down here, we can do whatever we want. So we got microwave too, down here. So I'm going to go microwave my way out and do the thing that will get me closer to heaven. But I, hey, hey, you're going to hear bad news later. I'm sorry. If you are one of these people that God's been touching your heart, you know how you might know you one of these people what I'm saying that you get it all we irritated who does she think she is? Oh, she's judging me. She thinks she's all that. God is talking to you. It's time to grow up. He's trying to feed you a little, well, potato. But you want milk. The 1% milk. Hey, yeah, people might say, oh, it's healthy. That's no milk. I don't like it. You see what I'm saying? That's no milk. If you're going to drink milk, you drink milk. You see what I'm saying? God doesn't have those diet stuff. He has the real stuff, the good stuff. That's what you need spiritually. Drinking, you know, this 1% fat-free milk and spiritual, you can't stand in front of a demon and tell them, I need you to move out of my of my presence is going to say, who are you? Why? Because you've been, you've been drinking 
non-fat milk. You know, this uh, vegan stuff. Come on. It, uh, it, it, you know, I wish you, 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 you can see what I'm trying to say. God is trying to tell you, I need you to grow up. I've been holding you like this now. You, you, you grown. God cannot keep holding you like this. You need to start eating meat. In order for him to do that, you got to make room. You know? And then, you know, in the meantime, those he put uh, 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 um, to help you out, those pastors, those leaders, whoever's over you, they keep talking to you about the same thing. The same thing. The, the, you know, they're like a hamster going in that wheel. You know, you don't you see those hamsters? They're still fat. And they exercise all day, running around, but they stay fat. You see what I'm saying? So you don't want to be a hamster going around, and, but yet you don't get skinny. You are fat. Come on, fat with the wrong stuff. But God is trying to help you out. So you need to let God deal with that heart. Let him in so that the things you so desire to do. Guess what? He put them in your heart, by the way. He purposed it in your heart. You see, this is the, 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 the before taste God gave us. It meant for us to go after him. Ooh, I would love to do this. You see what I'm saying? He purposes, so now he wants you to come after him. And then, you know, he, when you go after God, and then he's going to work in that heart, and then what he purposes in your heart, he's going to make it happen. But if you don't let him, God, in, I'm sorry to say, you now, you, you're only going to see people do it and wishing, and wishing, but he will never use you because what he wants to do, because God is not interested, by the way, and you doing this and that, this and that, that, that. God is not interested in that. He's interested in having you coming back to him one day. That's all he's interested in. The other things is just like, you know, you know, bonus we got, you know, we have from him because he's in us, he's filling us up, and then we're doing those things he leads us to do. You know, those are bonus things I call them. God is interested in you make it to where he's at to be with him one day for eternity. That's why he's not interested in your work and your this and your that. You got this, that, that going on, and God just doesn't care for it. Because you will be, you, if you do not care for you're going to be one of those people who's going to say, who are you? You? Who are you? Oh, remember God? Oh, I go visit people in a hospital. You don't remember that? I cast out demons. Maybe you might say, wasn't that demon who beat the crap out of you? You see what I'm saying? Do not, they, they do, what, man, we don't, man, what's we, what, 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 what's we, oh, with that breath, leave you. That's it. No more chances. And God is trying to give you Chance after chance after chance, and you not yielding. You just, hey, you don't want that to happen, my brother or sister. Whoever God is talking to, listen, listen, because the moment you take your last, last breath, it's too late. It's too late. But it's not too late now. He's saying to you, I, I, I know. The desires you have, you want to work for me. But in order for me to work for, for in order for you to work for me, God says, I got to train you. And God is not sloppy in training people. He has to train you the right way. After all, you representing him. You see what he did to Moses because Moses missed representing him? That's all. He missed representing him. So we don't want to miss representing God. Make God look bad. No, we don't want that. Okay, so therefore let God work in your heart. Jeremiah 17 verse 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things. Who can understand it? You know, I use the same reference as uh, Matthew 15, 19, out of the heart proceed. That's why the heart is deceitful because some of us, we don't even know those things. Sometimes they bury deep, 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 deep down. You don't know. You just don't know until somebody, the enemy used to push the wrong button and then things coming out of you. That's why the heart is deceitful. Deceitful. James 3 Verses 7 and 8, and then we're going to 
um, drop down to 10. I'm going to read that in the easy version. Okay? In the easy version. It says, remember this. People can cause all kind of things to do what they want them to do. They have done this with animals, birds, snakes, and fish. But no person can rule his tongue. It continues to say bad things. It is like a bad poison that can cause death. And in, in, uh, in uh, King Jan a New King James Version, he said, we are able to tame animals. That means, you know, you tame dogs, you tame cats, you tame horses. You know, you put this thing in their mouth, you know, you lead them. You tell them what to do. You, they're able to listen to you. They're able to let you do that. You train those animals, but yet, but yet, you're not able to train your tongue. You're not able to train your tongue. That's one thing we can, we, human beings, can do. Train our tongue. But God is able to do that. We can ask the Lord. We can ask the Lord to, 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 to train our tongue, to watch over our tongue, to help us. To when we speak in that, let, let the right things come out. But for the right things to come out, but you must let him in and speak and speak of those things that he's putting in your heart. And um, I have, I'm going to finish with this. I have, uh, we don't want to keep going thinking that we are worshiping God the way we are with an uncircumcised heart and hear these awful words from the Lord one day. Matthew 29, 13. These are the awful things you might hear from the Lord if you kept going, if you're not listening to what he's saying, if you don't refuse to let him in. God is saying on, my, on Isaiah 29 verse 13, Isaiah 29 verse 13, he said, Therefore, the Lord said, And as much as these people draw near with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but have removed their heart far from me. And their fear towards me is thought by the commitment of man. Let me read that in the God News trans Translation. Isaiah 29, 13, it says, The Lord said, These people claim to worship me, but their words are meaningless, and their hearts are somewhere else. Their religion is nothing but human rules and traditions, which they have simply memorized. That's what God is saying. That's God speaking. This is what an uncircumcised Christian is. They worship God with their words. Their words, they worship God with their words, but their words is meaningless. It's worthless. And their heart is somewhere else because they don't want God to come in. They don't want God to deal with their heart because you're not letting God deal with the heart. You're not letting God do what he's supposed to do and get the heart the way it's supposed to be. This is what, what, what we're reading right there. This is what God is saying. This is what exactly what we're doing. What a waste of time. That's a waste of time having church shouting hallelujah. You're doing this, you're doing that. And the, these things you're doing, you know, all the works and things. And God said they are taught by, by they, they are rules that you made up. They are things that you, you, you follow in your, your, your budget or your, not your budget, your, your to-do list. That's exactly what it is. And God says it's meaningful, it's worthless, it's garbage. I don't want you to approach me that way. That's what God is saying. Because the thing is, you know what? You can either be hot or you can either be cold. 
You cannot be lukewarm. That's who God moves. Just speak out. You don't want God to speak you out because you can't decide to be hot or cold, but you want to be in the middle. Or I'm in the world, I'm in God. You know, and then you, you can't make up your mind. Okay? And then you don't want God to deal with you. He says, the things you're doing, they're just to-do lists, they're meaningless, they're worth nothing. And God does not want anybody approaching him and, you know, just nice words that you, 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 you wrote down, nice poems. No, he wants them coming from the heart. For them to come from the heart, he has to get in and he has to change that heart. Hallelujah. One last scripture. One last scripture. Matthew 7, verses 21 to 23. It says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? Have we not done wonders in your name? And then Jesus is going to declare to them, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who practice lawlessness. The king, um, and the other version is say, you wicked. You practice wickedness. That means when you're doing things outside of God's will, you do what you want to do with the things he didn't tell you to do, but your heart is far away. Your heart is far away. Your heart is far away. And Jesus say, he's going to tell you one day, who are you? Get away from me. You're wicked. That's what he's going to tell you. You don't want that. And then you see, in the meantime, this is the things you're going to say to the Lord. I prophesy, God save the Lord. You're going to say, oh, Lord, I did miracles. I fed 10,000. Remember, you only fed 5,000. I fed 10,000. Oh, with one fish, by the way, you remember you had to eat two fish? This is going to say, who are you? Remember this, Lord? Remember this? I don't know who you are. Is that what we want to hear? We don't want to hear that. That's not what we want to hear from God. When you knock that day, it's going to be too late. Because if Jesus is not letting you in, where are you going? There is only two ways. Two doors. Nothing else. There is no other actions. If Jesus says you can't come in, where are you going? Where are you going? Do I have to spell it? You already know the answer to that. If Jesus not letting you in, after you did all those works, you tell me where you going. If you don't let the Lord circumcise your heart, he, you're going to hear those words. You know the first time I read this, it terrifies me. And I remind myself every time of this scripture. Every time. I want to, you know, I keep it there. I want to always looking at it to remind me it's not about me. It's about God. It's not about doing works. It's about letting him in. Because me, I don't know about you. I want to be with God one day. I am not going to spend all these years down here in this wicked world, this perverted world. Oh my God, I'm finally getting out of it. And then I'm going to go to another one that's worth. And then we're talking about eternity. At least down here, it's just for a moment. But down there, down there, it's for eternity. Why do I have to suffer here and suffer worse? Oh, come on. I mean, you know, you know, we human beings, we always like, oh, it's logic. Come on, that's come on. It's common sense. Come on. Why would you want that? But that's what will happen. God's word is the truth, and that's Jesus Himself 
speaking right here. He said, not everybody said, Lord, Lord. Oh, Lord, God. Oh, when they say, Lord, they're first. Oh, Lord. He said, not everybody saying, Lord, Lord, oh, Lord, that's going to, they, they, I don't know who they are. They keep saying, Lord, who are they? Every time they just hear, Lord, he said, who's calling me? Who is that? He don't know you. He said, not everybody will enter the kingdom. Why? Because he said, everybody, everybody, everybody that can enter is the one that's going to do the will of my father. If you don't want him to circumcise your heart, that means you do your own thing. He's not Lord of your heart. So therefore, that's what you're going to hear. But if you let him in, let him in, I promise you, he's going to say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. These are the words you want to hear. This is why you hear, and then you're working so hard, and then you, 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 you want to go and hear your master saying that. Well done. Welcome, my child. Welcome. Oh, man, I've been waiting for you. That's what you want. That's what you want. Not, tell, not him telling you. The thing is, you know, I just have a picture. A picture just flashes in my, in my mind right now. You know when the Lord, <laughs> thank you, Lord. You know when he's going to say to you, when you're going to knock? This is not even going to open the door like this, no? You might sneak in. Oh, 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 oh. he's going to crack it open. I said, who is this? Who are you? He goes, it's me, Lord. It's me. You remember me? You remember me? He said, you know, I was listening to a preacher. You, you know, he was talking about prayer. Christian, you do not pray. You know, he said, and then he was talking about this. He's going to say, you know, they pray for seven minutes once a month. They're going to, and then they're going to say, teachers, remember me? You know, God, I'm going through this. You're not helping. You're just going to say, who are you? Because you remember me? I prayed to you seven, uh, 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 a month ago, seven weeks ago. You remember me? You remember me? Just gonna say, who are you? I don't know. I don't know you. This is not even going to open the door wide open. Because if it's open and wide open, while you're saying those things, you're going to get in. You're going to get in. You're going to get in. But he's just going to crack it open like this. They have to go like this. It's going to go like this. Who are you? Oh, it's me. You who? You see what I'm saying? So you're going to give him all those things, saying all those things, and then he doesn't know who you are. That's a waste of time. I don't know about everybody else. I don't have time to waste in God. And believe it, that's one of my testimony when I got born again. I just got born again, and that was one of my prayer. I'll never forget it. I was living in my apartment. I used to live alone, and that means when I'm praying, oh, man, I got the whole house screaming and yelling. And I said, God, I said, God, don't waste my time, and I won't waste yours if I cannot be a real, genuine Christian. Am I a real, genuine Christian? God is working on me. That's all I can say. He's working on me. And I want to be real. You gotta want it. You don't want to be fake. You don't want to worship God with your mouth. You don't want to do that. Because it's a waste of time. Because I have to be honest with the Lord. Sometimes God loves it. Not sometimes. God loves it when we're honest with him. Don't play game. This is not a game. It's Spiritual things, it's not a game. Because the moment you lose your breath, it's too late. And God is giving you another chance. He's giving, it's, you know, you may say that, oh, I sound rough. Look, I'm just telling you the truth. That's why Jesus said, Matthew 7, go read it and you see. I'm just repeating his word. That's all I'm doing. He spoke it before. He's speaking it to you now. Stop doing the things you're doing and then your heart is far away from God. God said those things are meaningless. If he doesn't have your heart, they're meaningless. It's only when God has your heart, what you do have meaning. What you do, he, he, he wrote it down, you get credit for it. You're working on hard and then not getting credit? Come on, who likes that? Okay, so having said that, 
And I pray the Lord that you receive this. I pray the Lord that you let him in. He's knocking because you, you're feeling irritated. You're feeling that who God is touching something. He gets in your face. Look, that's the way he does things. He does things that way. So now let him in. Don't argue. Don't resist. Just let him in because I'm telling you, you don't want to go through your whole life Imagine, you know, you, you, it's time to die in your 80s and your 90s, and then you, you, you endure all these things here, and then this is going to crack the door open, you know, looking at you in, in that little big hole to say, who are you? Come on. Come on, you don't want that. So if you are someone, and somehow, somehow you're questioning you're questioning your salvation. You're questioning the things that you do. Yeah, here and there you got those cross words that come out. Here and there you got this anger. Here and there you refuse to forgive. Here and there you just cannot let people go because they did this and that. Here and there you do it this and that. I don't care what it is to just say, look, he died for your sin. All you have to do. All you have to do is ask him for forgiveness and ask him, please come into my heart. Now I want you to be my Lord. Because a lot of us, when we do that, we only have him as a savior. That's all it is. But you, for him to be your Lord, you got to come in. You got to have access to the heart. And then when he has access to the heart, he wants to come and sit in there. And then, he, and then your, your, your heart is full of roaches. Yeah. It's full of Filth, you got dirty clothes, sticky shoes everywhere. It stinks. It stinks. You're going to say, why, why, why? Can you buy a scented candle at least? You see what I'm saying? Then it's filthy. So now, in order for him to sit in there, he's going to have to clean it. He's going to have to clean it. You know, he got to come and clean it. But if you don't want him to come clean it, you say, oh, I like my filth. So therefore, if you keep resisting him, I promise you, he's going he's gonna to say, okay, okay, because he's a gentleman, he cannot force you. But it, 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 it's terrible, terrible, for later you hear those words, it's no good, it's no good. So if the Lord is knocking in your heart right now, all you have to do is repent and ask God, please, circumcise my heart. It's not an easy process, but if you let him, if you stop resisting, it's going to be better. It's a, it, the process is going to be smoother. You see what I'm saying? And then those things is getting out of your heart are things that's going to make you sick. They're not good for your health. They're not. That's why uh, Moses says, when we read Deuteronomy 3, he says that, he says, if you let God circumcise your heart, it will be good for you. It will be good for you. That means those things that's getting ready to manifest in your life, those, those dreadful diseases, God says, if you let me in, I get to clean everything out. I get to clean it out, mold and everything. He said, and then he can sit there. He's going to enthrone in your heart. And then one day he will say, welcome, my child. Well done good and faithful servant. Not because you're perfect. We're not perfect. We are sinners and we fall short in the glory of God every day. If not every second, every day. We live in a fallen world. It's corrupted. We can't help it. We read in Jeremiah 17, now he said the heart is deceitful. We can't help it but to make mistakes. But God is faithful. God is faithful. He said when you repent and you turn away, you turn away from your wickedness, he said I will restore you. I will heal you. He said every time you pray, he said I'm going to heal you. You know, and so just give him your heart. Let him in. You know, for the sake of the things that you are doing now, aren't you tired? Yes, the beautiful things, yes, the nice things, but it cannot save you because Jesus will crack the door open and say, who are you? And you don't want to try to give an excuse, try to tell him, hey, don't you know me? I used to work in the White House. No, he doesn't care. So therefore, he doesn't care who you know. Who you know can't take you to heaven. Who you know 
if nothing is worthless. So therefore, let the Lord in. Let the Lord in. So those of you who do not know what I'm talking about, and you, you know, hey, this is how you do things. Your mouth is filthy, you know. You know, you just go on living. Hey, who can blame you? After all, the enemy, the, the devil, Satan, is your father. Because that's why he said, if when we read, when we read the book of Matthew, he, Jesus tells them that. He said, hey, the father, your father is the devil because you want to do all those bad things that's coming out of your heart. And the, the, the enemy is behind those things. It's behind those things. Okay, so when you live in the world, you, you don't know Jesus as your personal savior. The enemy is the one who's leading you. The enemy is the one who owns you. That means, hey, those things you do in are the things that glorifies him. You see what I'm saying? So you don't want that. And then I tell you what, you can switch kingdom right now. If you are tired of the way you're doing things right now, if those things I'm talking about, you would like God to come in and be the Lord of your heart, all you have to do is ask. All you have to do is ask. Let me lead you to prayer. And, and that's all it takes. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, say, Jesus, I thank you. Thank you for your word today. I didn't like the way she speak, but somehow it does something to me. Jesus, please forgive me of all my sin. Forgive me of all my transgressions. Jesus, wash me and cleanse me. I want to thank you for everything you've done for me, for dying on the cross for me. And you rise again in the third day. I believe that. Now, Jesus, I'm asking you, please come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Show me how to open my heart to you. I want you to change my heart. I want you to fill my heart. And I want to be a different person. I don't want you to crack the door open looking at the peephole. I would like you to welcome me into your kingdom. Please take over, Jesus. Help me. Show me how to do it. I surrender. I surrender my heart. I surrender my mind. I surrender my will because I want to serve you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my will. I surrender my home to you. I surrender my children to you. Please take over. I want to live for you. I want to be real for you. I thank you for what you're going to do in my life. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. If you just pray like this, whether you just accepting the Lord, whether you knew the Lord before, guess what? Congratulations. Congratulations. Welcome back. Those of you who knew him before, welcome back to the family of God. Those of you who just prayed this way that you didn't know him before, welcome, welcome to the family of God. God loves you. He's, he has great plans for you. But if you let him into your heart, I promise you, your life will never, ever be the same again. And it is going to be all for good. All for good. Hallelujah. I thank God for you. Um, I, I, I pray that you will have a blessed day. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon. And we will see next week. I don't know what he has for you. But tune in. And I'm sure he has a word for you. I uh, Thank you. I'll see you later. Bye.